Just what did this episode not have? What a way to kick off Season 2. Hey everyone, Templar74 here with another Yu-Gi-Oh! video, and today's Yu-Gi-Oh! video is going to be my thoughts and impressions regarding episode 47 of Yu-Gi-Oh! Brains, the season 2 opener, and I gotta be honest with you guys, after watching this episode, season 2 is showing to be just as promising and is showing to be possibly just as great as season 1. But uh, before I ramble on about that too much longer, let's talk about the actual episode, and there is a lot to talk about. So the episode starts off with I, and he's going through the network until he finally arrives at the coordinates of Cyverse World, the one that he hid away. And we actually see him unlock Cyverse World and try to go in to find all the other AIs, the other Ignises, his friends. But he is shocked because when he arrives back in Cyverse World, it's completely in ruins. You can't see any of the other AIs anywhere. They're all gone. The only thing Ignis is able to find is the little Link monster that he played around with back in the transition when we were back battling Revolver and we saw these flashbacks to Cyverse World. The little uh, monster that he was messing around with is known as Link Karibo. So pretty much like the Link version of Karibo. You know, we got to have a Karibo variant in every single series we've done up to this point. But uh, we see Ignis find him. He's glad to see that at least Link Karibo is okay. But he's angry. He's upset. He's scared. He doesn't know what happened to Cyverse World. And this just infuriates him as we transition on to the new opening. Now, the new opening, Go Forward... I really want to take a few seconds to talk about this because the new opening was more upbeat than the first one, but it still managed to have that serious tone. I really loved Go Forward. This is one of the better Yu-Gi-Oh! openings in a while. I really do like it. And we also did get a couple of things that I think are possibly being hinted at further on in the series. For example, during the beginning, through all the transitions, we actually see Revolver with Spectre and the Three Knights of Hanoi. And I think that that's pretty much a hint towards what we were thinking originally was going to happen, will happen, where Revolver's gone off the scene. He's not relevant right at the moment, but him and the Knights of Hanoi are still working behind the scenes to go on and do what they're going to do and destroy Cyverse World, although at this point Cyverse is already destroyed. But anyway, that was pretty much the opening. We saw a lot of hints to things to come. It was beautifully animated. I really liked the music. It was still, you know, it still had that serious tone, but it was upbeat enough to where you can tell that this is a new series and this new, well, new season rather, not new season or series. But anyway, new season and this new season it will have a different tone than the first. So anyway, the new opening go forward, really great. We then transition back to the episode, and we actually see Yusuku there, and he's actually working the food truck because Kusungi has gone visiting Jin. And we actually see Aoi show up, and she's kind of in a subtle way, maybe in her own little weird, awkward way. She's kind of trying to flirt with Playmaker, really. She's just trying to get some kind of interaction, some kind of rise out of him, and even thanks her for or thanks Playmaker Yusuku for this point. He, She thanks him for finding her while she was unconscious, but Yusuku says, you know, it's just, you know, I just did what anybody would do, is Aoi kind of with the blush on her face says, you know, I probably shouldn't say this, but I don't think you're going to get any customers today. And then, of course, we go back to Naoki, who is telling his mom not to bother him. And, of course, he's going into the new Link frames. And in the new Link frames, we see Brave Max. He's there. Everybody's there. The new Link frames looks real awesome. It's really well animated. Everybody's having a good time. All these events going on. There's new shops here. There are new things you can do. And we spend a good chunk of this episode just exploring the new Link range. But during this time, we also transition back to the real world for several key things. The first one is we actually see Akira go against the Queen, who is apparently the new head honcho at Solid Technology, his new boss. And we learn that Playmaker actually has a bounty on his head because the Queen is still heck bent on capturing the Ignis. Of course, you know, Playmaker doesn't have Ignis at this point, but she's determined that Playmaker can lead them to Cyverse World to the Ignis so that they can capture him. Because, of course, with Cyverse and Ignis still in the picture, 
uh, solid technology is never going to be able to fully develop Link Brain. So that's why Playmaker has the hit out on his head. Now, Akira is very hesitant to go after Playmaker at all. He says, why are we going after Playmaker? He defeated the Knights of Hanoi. You know, he's a hero. He saved my sister. Why are we going after him? But the Queen basically threatens him and says, if you don't lead this new bounty hunting squad, Akira, you're going to end up like the rest of your staff and be completely reassigned. So now we learn that Akira is now head of security again at Solid Technology, and his one job is to lead the bounty hunting team that's going to go after Playmaker. And we get briefly introduced to the bounty hunting team. It's led by Go Onisaka, and actually Akira is saying, I'm surprised you would do this. But Go says, I have my reasons for doing it. We then transition back into Blink Brains. We see Blue Angel. She's hosting an event. We go back to the real world again briefly, and we see Kusungi there with Jin, and they're sitting there trying to talk, but as all this is going on, we transition back to Link Brains. So this is pretty much the heck of the episode. We go back and forth between the new Link Brains and the real world. We see a little bit of Robopi still grieving over Ignis, her eye being gone, but then we go back to Jin, and this is where the episode takes a really drastic turn and a real serious turn. We see the television come on behind Kusungi as he's talking to Jen, and we actually see this weird entity actually hopping out of the television or computer monitor, and he's actually going to Jen. And Kusungi tries to stop him, but this weird energy mass ends up stealing his consciousness before escaping back into Link Brains. So Kusungi immediately calls Yusuku, and at first Yusuku is just like, don't worry about it, the food truck's fine. But then Kusungi explains what happened to Jin, and of course Yusuku is going to pursue this entity into the new Link Brains to try to get him and to get Jin back. So Playmaker is now in the new Link Brains, and duelists immediately notice him, and they actually send out the memo, spent spread it far and wide that there is Playmaker. Playmaker is back and everybody is flocking to try to get a glimpse of Playmaker and finally we see Playmaker arrive and he finds the bounty hunter that we saw earlier talking to Emma and actually during this time we actually see I return to Playmaker because at first he's saying we're going to capture you for the bounty and Playmaker is saying I don't have the Ignis anymore why are you after me and that's when I kind of pops his head out of the dual disc and he's like uh hi Playmaker and so Yusuku's amazed that I came back and we actually see the Link Karibo popping out underneath him too. And that's when I explains that something horrible had happened to Cyverse World and that's why he came back. But this is not the time. So Playmaker just says, tell me the details later. And that's when I not only tells him about this, but he also gives him the Link Karibo spell card or the Link Karibo link card for his deck. And Playmaker actually said, hmm, this is a good card. I can work with this before the speed duel begins. But before the speed duel begins, rather, this bounty hunter that's been chasing after Playmaker, Ignis does one other thing. I does one other thing because he comes up and he says, Link Brains isn't the only thing that's improved. I've upgraded too. And with the snap of his fingers, I summons a data storm getting rid of this bounty hunter so that they can go after the entity that attacked Jin. So with the bounty hunter gone, they're now riding on a data storm that I has brought into the picture and they're going after this. And that's when Playmaker says, we're going to trade him because in the new Link Brains, you can actually trade for duels. And if I win, I'll be able to get Jin's consciousness back but the queen who's pulling the strings for this whole thing with the mysterious entity here she's basically telling him go on go ahead and duel him so the duel begins between playmaker and this unknown entity and we actually see playmaker take the first move well we see the entity take the first move i don't know why i keep thinking it was playmaker probably because the entity's first opening move is just a set card and he ends his turn but anyway, then Playmaker takes his turn. He summons Cyverse Wizard, and he's able to Link Summon a new Wind Attribute Link Monster, as well as Link Aribo. But this new entity, he has very little knowledge of what he's up against, because this entity then activates a spell card called Flow Dive or Flow High Dive Castle Link. And what this card is gives a very eerie feeling to Playmaker and Ignis, because they're like, 
What's this feeling? And that's when Playmaker puts two and two together. That's a Cyverse card. So whoever this entity is, whoever's pulling the strings, is actually using Cyverse against Playmaker, who is the undisputed master of Cyverse. Let's just put it that way. But we see this duel go on, and we actually see this entity bring out Flow High Dive and the High Dive, Cyverse High Dive monsters. We see two of those show up, and we actually see a new Link spell, which we don't really get into at the moment, because pretty much all this Link spell has done so far is allow him to uh, bring out a extra low High Dive, Cyverse High Dive monster. So yeah, we've got two monsters here. The duel is already this mysterious entity is at 1,400. Playmaker is still at 4,000, but he's facing a direct attack after his field has been pretty much wiped at this point. So that's where the episode leaves off between this climactic speed duel between Playmaker and this unknown entity. So after that, we go into the new ending, and real quick, although there isn't a whole lot in this ending, the new ending is called Password End, and or Password, and the new Password Ending... I'll just say this, it's still catchy, it still has that serious tone, but again, it's more of an upbeat tone, and I really did enjoy the ending almost as much as I did the opening. But with all that being said, that was pretty much the episode. Like I said, what didn't this episode had? It had a new opening, a new ending, a new enemy, it had a little bit of Aoi and Yusuku moment, it had... Akira feeling regret for having to go after Playmaker for everything that he's done. Good introduction to the new Vrains. It was just a great episode all the way around, in my opinion. Overall, I give this episode a 9 out of 10. This was really a great episode to catch, especially if you want preludes to things we're going to see here in the future in Season 2 of Link Vrains. But uh, anyway, with all that said and aside, in the comment section down below, let me know what you guys thought of this week's episode. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you think it was just at eh, there? What were your thoughts on the new opening? What were your new thoughts on the ending? Just let me know what your guys' thoughts are about all this in the comment section down below because as always, I enjoy hearing from you. All right, everyone, as always, Templar74 signing off. Have a great day, everybody, and I'll talk to you all next time. Goodbye, everybody.